Kigali. Thank you very much. Wonderful to be here again. Uh, this is the first visit to Indonesia as a World Bank CEO. So why is it this time in Bali and what target that you need to accomplish in this visit? We are here because uh, the annual meetings of the World Bank and IMF are hosted mm. in Bali by, mm. by Indonesia. Mm. And it is wonderful for Indonesia, the fourth largest country in the world, mm. to put itself on the mi big map of economic financial mm. decisions mm. are making. Mm. Uh, but we also want to work on what is core for us, mm. supporting development in Indonesia. Mm. So I take advantage of being here to also visit projects we fund, see how we work with our partners mm. and dream big dreams for what more we can do in Indonesia. What, what, what kind of dream that you're going to create in Indonesia? That Indonesia is capable to leapfrog on the basis of investing in its own people. Indonesia is uh, still not capturing the full potential of a youthful population. Mm. And what we want to see is that strength of the country to translate into highly educated entrepreneurial people mm. who work in an investment climate mm. that allows them to reach their full potential. Yeah. Anybody who would travel the roads of Bali would see the many small businesses okay. flourishing. Mm -hmm. Anybody would see how fantastic Indonesia is for tourism. Mm. And yet the country is not where it belongs in terms of uh, tourist numbers. Mm. Um, just to give you one example, there are some 10, 11 million people coming to Indonesia, mm -hmm. much fewer than in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And Indonesia has so much mm. uh, to offer. But also the uh, young people of Indonesia dream for jobs of the future, mm. to be able to grab the opportunities of mm. the digital mm. economy, mm. which is critical for a country that is so large. Mm. You fly eight hours from one side mm. of Indonesia mm. to the other. Mm. There has to be the full potential of the digital economy right here in Indonesia and we want to be part of it. Yeah, and it's very interesting because human capital is one of the key topic that's going to be a uh, target of its presidency. Do you think that all of the programs is ready enough to boost that target with the demographic bonus uh, in a couple of years for Indonesia? What we have seen is that in Indonesia very persistently moved its in it, it its intention to lift up Indonesian mm -hmm. capabilities from early enrollment in schooling, preschool, uh, enrollment in Indonesia has been boosted to focus on the quality of education when you're in school, you mm -hmm. actually learn, you acquire mm -hmm. skills, mm -hmm. and then to what opportunities there are for young people once they finish school very strong attention on especially SMEs. Mm. Uh, what we would like to help Indonesia do, given the size, is to be able to scale up massively the good experiences mm. that have been created. Mm -hmm. So the way we work in Indonesia is quite unique. We call it the platform approach. Mm. Every World Bank project mm. here aims to massively transform public spending across the country. Mm. Just one example, last year we invested $1.8 billion in new projects, mm. but with this money we influenced almost $25 billion public mm. programs of the country mm -hmm. uh, and then make these public programs to be the gateway for private finance mm. to flow. Mm. So from our project to the whole program of the country, a platform to influence development, to the ambition for this to generate mm. private finance on scale. Okay, and Kristalina, we can see that World Bank's capital increased, mm -hmm. you know, the largest in the his its history. So how you're going to manage that huge capital, as, uh, including for emerging countries such as Indonesia? Uh, what we would like to do is to use the injection of capital mm. to transform our financing into a lever
for more private finance to flow. Mm. In other words, rather than concentrating only on what we can do, now we can do more, mm -hmm. to concentrate on how what we do makes investment conditions better and mm. opens up opportunities for more finance to flow. Mm. Indonesia, like other emerging mm. markets, still doesn't get its fair share of private finance flows mm. because of concerns about uh, uh, governance, uh, occasionally... Bureaucracy. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And, and what we want is to use our acquired mm. strength mm. as a World Bank group to be that booster of finance on a very large scale. Uh, we now can do about up to a hundred billion dollars a year with our capital increase. Our dream is to make our hundred billion dollar a platform for at least a trillion dollars to materialize as investments in the developing world. And how, how big that emerging markets including Indonesia will get the impact of that huge capital? Uh, I am uh, very confident that uh, the increase in capital will significantly benefit exactly countries like Indonesia that are middle-income countries, not yet at the higher end, uh, but with a relatively good fiscal uh, performance, uh, government, government policies that are sound. Uh, and that allows our own investment to be more impactful. Mm. So we see in the use of our increased capital resources, the uh, lower, lower middle income mm. countries mm. benefiting, relatively speaking, the most mm -hmm. in comparison to the upper middle income countries, okay. because this is where the needs for investments are most mm -hmm. profound. Okay, and as, as you mentioned before, that emerging countries would be one of uh, the target that will get the impact of that capital. Uh, do you see that what, what kind of obstacles that Indonesia uh, need need to need to anticipate, you know, in the mid term and in long term? Mm -hmm. Well, the, uh, there are two issues for Indonesia mm -hmm. to uh, to address to continue to address. Mm -hmm. One is the ability to improve quality of investments, especially investments in human capital. And uh, mm -hmm. Indonesia takes very seriously. The same applies for investments in physical capital, but mm -hmm. especially investments in people. Because what the country recognizes is that while there are high performing uh, schools, educational institutions, mm -hmm. because of the size of the country, mm -hmm. the huge number of teachers mm -hmm at all levels mm. everywhere, getting this quality up and sustaining it up is not an easy task. Mm. How can we help? We are helping by providing a good measurement for Indonesia so they would know where they need to prioritize mm. uh, by the introdu introduction of the human capital index. So you can see where you are, mm. what you have to do to get uh, mm. further. And of course, by financing programs mm. and working within Indonesia as a good friend, but also uh, a second pair of eyes mm -hmm. that can help Indonesia mm. adjust and lift up its level of ambition. So this is in the area of investing in people. People are going to be critical for the future of the country. But then secondly, structurally. Indonesia has to continue to work towards making the economy more aligned with the uh, natural capacity it has. Okay. Take tourism. Okay. Tourism has a huge way to grow in Indonesia and people here in Bali were telling me make sure that in your meetings mm. you make Bali yeah. even more, more attractive. Mm. Uh, Indonesia can be an exporter of sun and sand and surf mm -hmm. on a much larger scale. Yeah. And on the other side, Indonesia also has uh, capacity to lift mm -hmm. up its belonging in the digital economy. Mm -hmm. uh, and that kind of competitiveness based on the 21st century mm -hmm. uh, economy is what we also can assist uh, through our investments uh, uh, with. And obviously what it means is physical investment in infrastructure, mm, mm. but much more importantly, improvements in how mm. you govern mm. and how you 
in increase the contribution mm. of your biggest asset, the people. The people is the asset. And Kristalina, we can see that amid the challenging of global market uncertainties, you know, like trade war and a lot of things like a geopolitical tension. Do you think that Indonesia is facing the harder obstacle ahead? I, let me start with the... Uh, you know, like with the stunting issues and... Yep. The let, let me start with the word of praise for the Indonesian government. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a government that has zeroed on difficult but very important uh, mm -hmm. challenges for the mm -hmm. country. Uh, from stunting in the village, uh, mm -hmm. you're interviewing me, uh, the program is very well grounded mm -hmm. and the objective is by next year no more stunting. Uh, the whole country by the next year by the next year in this village they do not want Very to optimistic ever yeah. see the the ugly uh, face of a uh, stunted uh, uh, of stunting mm -hmm. in in the village uh, for the country the road to travel is longer the um, level of stunting is about 37 percent mm -hmm. was 37 percent it has dropped to 35 36 mm -hmm. uh, but we can by 2022, drop it to 22, mm. and then actually continue by 2030 mm. to achieve the goal because mm. the government is focused. Uh, what we see in Indonesia that is so inspiring for us as a partner is a government that doesn't shy away from the tough work to be done. Mm. And uh, that applies also on the macro uh, side. Mm. Uh, the country has managed to keep uh, its uh, debt uh, level to around 30 okay. percent. This is half of what they are allowed mm. to do mm. by their own law. Mm. Uh, and when they borrow, they are very careful what they borrow for. They borrow for investments, investments in infrastructure. I, I was so impressed by the road from yeah, the airport yeah. uh, to the conference mm. center. Uh, they, they borrow for productive uh, investments and they are extremely uh, key for the uh, sustainability of the country mm. to continue on this prudent course. Mm. Indonesia has a uh, flexible exchange rate that helps, mm. so it can swing up and down yeah. with the economy. And, and the government is fully aware that the world is uh, stepping into harder times. So already they are working in an anticipatory posture, mm. how to make sure that they protect uh, the country from mm. the risks that may come from elsewhere. Yeah, and, and, and do, do you, do you, how do you capture uh, the relationship between Indonesia and World Bank in a, in a long term ahead? Like, uh, is it going a breakthrough kind of relationship, uh, ex uh, not only about funding? Well, it is uh, a uh, very strong partnership with Indonesia. We learn with Indonesia. And what we learn here, we bring to other countries. And actually, our value for Indonesia is exactly that transmission line of knowledge. Right here, we are deploying what we learned in fighting stunting in other countries. Mm. So Indonesia doesn't have to discover it on, on, mm. on its own. Uh, but we also bring from other countries uh, uh, how you can step up your, your uh, investment in education, how can you measure quality, what standard can you put in place that allows you to lift up not only the very best, but not to have uh, anybody left uh, behind. Our uh, partnership, of course, includes this knowledge, this transmission line mm -hmm. we are, uh, and it includes financing. Uh, we are modest vis-a-vis -vis the size of the Indonesia economy, but what we make sure is that we hunt way above the amount of money we invest. Uh, we have been uh, uh, really heartbroken when we saw yeah. after Lombok the earthquake and tsunami Sula yeah. in Sulawesi. This year. Uh, we have been working with Indonesia mm. on disaster risk mm. management and I can tell you this is another area where mm. knowledge we bring from elsewhere we transmit to Indonesia. What we learn in Indonesia... To risk management to of risk disaster. Management, area. Exactly how can you make the country more resilient yeah. especially okay. with climate change upon us mm. but also how what we learn yeah. here we can globally deploy Kristalina Georgieva yes, World Bank wonderful. CEO thank you thank you very much thank you